Last week, I found myself in an increasingly common situation, and I'm probably not alone. I started desperately craving my mom's home food, but without my recipe box app to find her best recipes, I was at a loss. So the only option I had was to go home and satiate that itch. And just like that, Yogi and I embarked on a journey into the stratosphere in search of some home cooking. And after a few hours, we reached, and Yogi was probably more anxious for that food than I was. As always, I was hanging out in the kitchen the whole time. Due to my nervousness around pressure cookers, I watched from a safe distance as my parents fiddled with a device to make pongol. And a few whistles later, lunch was served, what we had traveled far and wide for. Okay, okay, so of course I didn't go all the way home just in search of home food. But I had just started working on my recipe box app and all that thinking about food and my parents teaching me how to cook made me miss home a bit more. So let's rewind a few days and see what I actually accomplished with my recipe box app. When I was designing this project, one of the biggest questions I had was which stack to use. And I stuck with the most unfamiliar alternative, Flutter. After I committed to this potentially regretful decision, I wanted to set up some tools to track my progress and hold myself accountable. First, I made a list of milestones to stay on track for the completion of the MVP. I tried to stay realistic with this list, but we'll see how that pans out. Next, I set up a Notion page just for this project where I can record my progress, useful links, and things I learn along the way. I have this nested structure with notes split up by project phases and then by each day. And if you'd like me to publish these changes and perhaps a series of blog posts, let me know in the comments below. Okay, now that that was all done, I had to set up my coding environment. So I finally upgraded my OS after months of incessant nagging installed Xcode, installed Flutter, revamped the look of my VS Code, and finally set up Oh My Zsh. Or is it Oh My Zsh? I'm not really sure. And finally, I set out to learn Flutter. Since today was all about uploading and saving images, I dutifully followed a YouTube tutorial <coughs> copy and pasted the code. And without much struggle, the image selection and cropping feature was done. I loved how plentiful the library of open source widgets is for Flutter. With just two widgets and a few lines of code, the entire feature was done. Then, to store the pictures, I stuck to what the tutorial suggested, using Firebase. The tricky thing with Flutter is that you actually have to set up everything for both iOS and Android environments manually. So here, long story short, I got stuck in a rabbit hole trying to set up Firebase on iOS because I overcomplicated things for myself more than I needed to. But after a few hours, it was up and running and the upload feature was pretty easy to implement after that. One thing I realized was that these tutorials aren't made for production level code. For example, here images are saved to Firebase without any additional precautions for user security. So I, as the app developer, can easily see everything my users are storing. And this is okay for the sake of a demo, but in my case, copying and pasting won't be sufficient. But don't worry, we'll revisit this point in a bit. And here's a quick demo of how everything looks after day one. So I can choose to take a picture or upload one. Then I can crop it as I wish and upload it to Firebase in just a few seconds. And with that, our two milestones of the day can be checked off. On to day two. My two milestones were to display those images that a user uploads onto the app and implement the OCR API, which stands for Optical Character Recognition. This will help us read the text in the screenshots and allow us to later search for the contents of a recipe in the search bar. But before I even got started with those two tasks, I wanted to fix some of the UI. Following what Flutter coincidentally calls recipes, I added a simple drawer and header so we can freely navigate around the app. Then I went on to creating the image grid. I used a combination of the grid view layout paired with the card component to get some nice shadows. While the UI worked, the real challenge came when I had to find those images to display. You see, in all the tutorials I found, the developer already knew the file names they wanted to list. However, in our application, we used a more complicated naming scheme, and in that case, there was no built-in method within Firebase to retrieve all images in a folder. So I had to do this really janky thing and had the pubspec.yaml file reference an uncommitted branch of Firebase storage with this fix. And after figuring all of that out, I was able to populate the image gallery, but it definitely wasn't easy. And this is the cool but also dangerous thing about Flutter. It's great that these crazy hacks are available open source in this sort of playground, but it means that there's a lot more struggling to make them work. And now for the second task, implementing OCR, which is made easy by Firebase's ML kit. This is where I had to put my thinking hat on. 
The brute force method would have been to just run this algorithm every time a search is made, which of course would be insanely slow. So the rest of this night, I just thought about the best way to optimize this. And my solution was to find a way to run OCR once when an image is uploaded to the app and then have that text stored as some sort of metadata. But at this point, it was late, so I decided to call it a day. Okay, day three. In the morning, Mr. Yogi had a much needed haircut, so he got up super early for his appointment. He was clearly very excited for his spa day and raced inside. Meanwhile, I opted for a change in scenery by working at a local Starbucks. My milestones had already been thrown out of whack, and on top of that, after talking with a fellow software engineer friend, I realized that I had completely overcomplicated the image storage in my app. Instead of having to worry about security and potentially having to pay for storage with Firebase, I could just store each user's image locally on their device. That would be so much easier. So after finally setting up a GitHub repo to account for potentially breaking my code, I set out to change everything to use local storage. And surprisingly, there was a lot less documentation on this since almost every tutorial was catered towards Firebase. But after about an hour and a half tinkering with the code, I was able to figure it out. But then I quickly had to run. And that's because I had an appointment to go sari shopping for an upcoming wedding. I felt super adult sari shopping by myself, especially since as a kid I'd usually fall asleep at the shop. But after about an hour, I selected a sari each for my mom and myself and then quickly headed over to pick up my spruced up yogi. And almost immediately after reaching home, I ended up getting really chilly and collapsing in my bed. And from here on out, I was pretty much knocked out cold. However, I did manage to get outside to scribble in some of the freshly fallen snow from the night before. And the rest of this day, I just slept and watched Parks and Rec on Netflix. And on what would have been the day that I finished the first round of my MVP, I was still stuck in bed under three layers of blankets. Luckily, I got better just in time for our trip home. And that catches us up to the eventful weekend at home. While I wish I could have accomplished more last week, I'm proud of how at least my app looks. I'll be spending the next week polishing up those remaining features for the MVP, and we'll have another update next week with my progress, so stay tuned for that. And if you like the style of devlogs and want to see more, please give this video a like and a subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one.